Dominaria. It's big. It's bigger than Earth. It's bigger than the DC Earth, which is also bigger than Earth. Through years of sets located there, Dominaria has become the most complex setting in magic. And since 2022 is the year of double Dominaria, it's only going to get more complicated, so I might as well get this out of the way now. From time to time, I like to take a look at the inspirations behind bottom-up planes. Bottom-up planes are primarily designed with mechanics in mind, but still pull from a wealth of traditions. Dominaria is no different, except for the fact that it takes concepts from a greater range of sources than any other plane in Magic. So many in fact, this video won't be quite the same as the previous installments. Since there are literally more than 10 times as many cards put on Dominaria as some of the other planes I've looked at, I'm not going to go quite as card by card as I have in the past. I choose not to subject myself or you all to that. Instead, I'll be concentrating on the broader cultures and locations of the plane instead. For the Wrath and Phyrexian aspects of Dominaria, see my Phyrexian Inspirations video. For more information on the science fiction elements of Dominaria, it's my video on the history of science fiction and magic. As always, I do my best when it comes to pronouncing things. I've consulted people when able and the internet when necessary, although I feel the internet is often inaccurate when it comes to that, so apologies if I mess up. Please do correct me if I get a pronunciation or anything else wrong. So without further ado, the history, mythology, pop culture, and more inspired Dominaria. Part 1. As always, likes are greatly appreciated. The Elder Dragon War was a mythologized conflict between godlike beings for control of the world in Dominaria's earliest days. It is comparable to stories from many cultures, such as the Greek Titanomachy, Norse Azure Veneer War, and Hindu battle between Devis and Asaras. The winners were eventually overthrown themselves, another common religious theme. Terry Siar is a now decimated landmass, also known as the Lost Continent, taking inspiration from Atlantis. Atlantis likely originated in the works of ancient Greek philosopher Plato, but the myth has been added to greatly over the generations. Some of these later interpretations recontextualize Atlantis as a utopia with incredible technology, greater than even what we have today. In the past, Terry Siar was ruled over by the Thon Empire who took inspiration from that interpretation, being a powerful and technologically advanced nation ultimately undone by hubris. Thuan's cities also have mostly Greek-sounding names, including its capital, which literally means an idyllic time in the past. Other Greek elements include city-states, a democratic structure, and their art. Their Thuan metal is similar to adamant, an ultra-strong metal from the writings of several areas, including Greece. Like the Greeks, the Thuan had an extensive constellation system, one was named after Elysium, an afterlife location in Greek mythology. The Weather Light is probably inspired by the Argo of Greek mythology, a magical ship full of questing heroes. Fittingly, it is related to the Greek-inspired Thon, according to the art of Magic the Gathering. That book also says that it is inspired by Jules Verne. Thon also has a minor Hebrew influence, featuring golems and a handful of Hebrew wards. Rebecca's name is similar to the biblical Rebecca. Nersil, a figure from this region, devised a ring used by various characters, most notably Lemduel. This ring is very comparable to Tolkien's One Ring, being magical and very powerful, but also corrupting. Lemduel incubated his zombie army in the Frost Marsh, also known as the Lake of the Dead, which reminds me of the Dead Marshes from the Two Towers. Man, Tolkien comes up a lot in these videos. I should start a bingo list for these things. Latinam also likely takes inspiration from Atlantis, being a once great civilization of magic and knowledge has since fallen into the ocean. Also, there's a card literally called Lord of Atlantis who hangs out in that name, but it would later be retconned as an in-universe translation error. It's Wizarding College, the School of the Unseen, may be inspired by the idea of invisible colleges, small communities of interacting scholars, or Discworld's Unseen University. Terry Sayer was also the region most affected by the Ice Age. I have an entire video about that block if you're interested. What we think of as the Ice Age, what the block was most inspired by, is the Pleistocene. Much of the block's wildlife comes from this era, but in the grand pop culture tradition, dinosaurs were also added. Current day animals from the Arctic region are also included. References to other cold regions, such as the Himalayas and Scandinavia, are also present. There's also a not insignificant ancient Egyptian influence, for some reason. The interdimensional entity Merit Lage who is frozen in a glacier in this region, is a clear Lovecraft homage. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to ponder the ramifications of Urza owning traditional Christian headwear. Because he's a chess master? Let's go with that. Terry Sierra was also the location of Urza's big war crime fun time, which triggered Dominaria's Dark Age. 
This era was similar to mostly inaccurate perceptions of Earth's so-called Dark Ages, such as corruption and increased church political power. Said church, the Church of Tal, is a very thinly veiled version of Christianity, with their creed almost being a Bible verse. Unambiguous Christian crosses are also pretty common in early Dominaria sets. I've seen it speculated that Lord Ith may be inspired by Dumas' Man in the Iron Mask, as he survives a long imprisonment and his release follows the villain's plan. Marseille is inspired by the biblical parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The Falahi Empire were desert nomads, likely inspired by various nomadic peoples of the Middle East. Their leader was referred to as Qadir, a word of Arabic origin which means capable, powerful, or mighty. The empire also had domed palaces, similar to some of the real-life architecture of the region. Middle Eastern mythological creatures such as rocks inhabit the area. Their custom of using knotted cords to keep records comes from the Inca of South America. Yodia, an enemy of the Flahi, also had Arabic influences. For example, the use of the patronymic Ben, though with a city name instead of a parent. One of its natives, Beau Lavar, dressed like a 19th century European officer. Almaz also had Middle Eastern influences, as it is ruled by a Pasha, which is a Turkish term. One of its regions, Barca, takes its name from an ancient Libyan city. The Carplusian Mountains perhaps take the names from the Carpathian Mountains of Europe, as the two mountains have similar terrain. The dwarves who lived in the region, when it was known as the Sardian Mountains, are pretty traditional Tarkinian dwarves. They live in a mountain and do a lot of mining, and like the dwarves of Moria and the Lonely Mountain, they get wiped out. The city of Dorgard sounds Norse. Similarly, the kobolds of Kharkiv are very close to the goblins of the Misty Mountains in The Hobbit, down to both having a large, grotesque leader. Likewise, the Argoth slash Fiendhorn Elves take after that book's Mirkwood Elves. They live in a giant mystical forest and have Torkinian names like Elisindral Ladimdrith. The forest also has giant bugs, though Magic's elves ride them rather than fight them. The nature goddess Gaia is worshipped across Dominaria, but perhaps most here. She comes directly from Greek mythology. There is also a Scandinavian influence in the names. Those elves would later migrate to Yavimaya, a living interconnected forest that has hostile outsiders. This is similar to Tolkien's Old Forest. It is also inhabited by sentient apes, similar to those seen in pulp fiction such as Conan the Barbarian and Tarzan. Pit Down was the location of the Fountain of Youth, a mythical spring spoken of since ancient Greece and strongly associated with the conquistador Ponce de Leon. The three-way battle of Pit Down had some similarities to the Hobbit's Battle of the Five Armies, with both involving a goblin invasion. Argive is similar to Renaissance-era Europe. You can see in some of the fashion, as well as the fact that it is ruled by an elaborate system of nobles and has a fascination with an earlier civilization. Its capital of Penrigan may come from King Arthur's sometimes last name, Pendragon. Much of Keldor's imagery comes from Germany and Scandinavia, like everyone on Dominaria, apparently, specifically in regards to their armor and also names. Finally, the Norse-inspired Jotun giants ally with them. The Keldoran city of Sordeb was taken over by its robotic underclass, a theme very common in fiction, such as 1921's R.U.R. Bardovia, traditional rivals of Keldor, have similar origins. Their name is similar to the German state of Bavaria. They have fictional Viking armor, their art is very Norse-esque, and German names are common. There's also a clear Celtic influence. The nation of Yumak may be inspired by the Yupik peoples of Alaska in the Russian Far East, based on their naming conventions and shamanistic religious traditions. The mostly uninhabited Boreal takes its name from the Greek and Latin word for Far Northern. Every place I've discussed so far comes from the same continent. <sighs> A disproportionate number of sets took place there, though, so they shouldn't all take this long. Legends had legendary creatures from all across Dominaria and from a number of eras. They are united by mostly being based off of pre-existing D&D OCs, and that is abundantly clear if you read the bios of any of them. Almost all of them are described as really cool, really powerful guys with one noble mission. The continent of Arona's mythical origin is that a goddess sacrificed her body to become the landscape. This is reminiscent of stories from many belief systems, such as the Chinese Pangu, Mesoamerican Clodoctoli, and Norse Ymir. The sea strait known as the Rip is referred to as such because of its riptides. It's not one of the most creatively named parts of Dominaria. The Keldans are confusingly similar to the Keldorans, both in name and in their Norse inspirations. Maybe I should have been pronouncing that J earlier. Keld is specifically inspired by the more negative Viking perceptions of the region, with a cold environment, raiding, slavery, longships, horned helmets, and a desire to die in combat. 
They also have sword and sorcery slash Conan vibes. Their warlords are known as Witch Kings, a term originated by Tolkien. Their mythological ship, the Garden Argosy, probably takes its name from the previously mentioned Greek Argo. Other areas of Arona, likely to be Scandinavian-inspired, are Hammerheim and Gardurns. The Whispering Woods were home to the famous magic character and Green Goblin cosplayer Greensleeves, who shares her name with a traditional English folk song. Other than that, the connection seems minimal, based on what that song is apparently about. The Herloon Minotaurs may be inspired by Native Americans, based on their naming conventions. Some Native American peoples, such as the Nanticoke, Lenny, Lenape, Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota, have naming ceremonies where individuals are given a new name later in life, often based on an element specific to that person. The inhabitants of Herloon have similarly devised nicknames. Their carvings and tattoos also have similarities with American petroglyphs, found in places such as the Santa Clara River Reserve. Benalia is based on medieval Europe, with knights, castles, and stained glass. The various clans reflect different European nations. The Capuchin clan got their name from Shakespeare's Italian Capulet family. The Avenant have a French linguistic influence, with their later being the Suzerain. The Jurev are similarly Eastern European-esque. The Tarmula might be Spanish. Circe is near the Mesa Pegasi, who are inspired by the unicorns of European legend, specifically the common idea that they were only comfortable around maidens. And yes, the fact that only the women have to prove their purity before marriage has a lot of baggage. The Benalia page also has this incredibly gross tidbit. I can't say I'm shocked that the author who thought of that went on to collaborate with Newt Gingrich. Kush is just straight up a real place, an ancient Nubian kingdom, which is also mentioned throughout the Bible. Barbar is another real term, originating from the Berbers of North Africa. And yes, having apes in traditional African garb with a real-life, Europeanized, African term applied to them makes me very uncomfortable. Verdura has Amazonian themes, being controlled by a powerful warrior woman, while the men are relegated to a remote village and are forbidden from venturing inland. The MTG wiki only describes the woman as competent, which feels like a neg. It also shares a name with an Italian river, which is probably a coincidence. La is described as a legendary region, which could be taken from the mythical Tibetan city of Shangri-La. Onia had seven cities of the sun, which are reminiscent of the seven cities of gold that the Spaniards believed could be found in the New World. The elves of Lanawar also take inspiration from Tolkien's wood elves, specifically their xenophobia. I don't know why the magic wiki seems almost impressed by this fact. Again, if you're my viewer who gets upset when I accuse fictional characters of xenophobia, get over it. The four saucer giant spiders. The elves are divided into Hames, which is a Scottish word for home. A general Celtic influence can be seen in some of their names. Many of the elves have red hair, which is often associated with Celtic heritage. Interestingly, the Mohawk-esque hairstyle, sported by many Lenore elves, is not too dissimilar to that of a 2,000-year-old bog body found in Ireland in 2003. Man, there are a lot of Tolkien homages on Dominaria. And let me tell you, the pace is kept in part two. It's Tolkien all the way down. Thank you for watching, and shout out to my patrons for supporting this channel. If you enjoyed the video, consider grabbing for part two, featuring Jamora, Otaria, Sopadia, and more. Be sure to share any connections with the other parts of Dominaria, and let me know if I missed anything here. Thanks.